Lady Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In 2019, this parliament recognized that we were in a climate emergency. While it is true that the provinces have jurisdiction over natural resources, climate change does not recognize <clears throat> political jurisdictions. The federal government is responsible for upholding the international climate accords Canada has signed. It is incumbent upon all levels of government to work together to address this emergency with the urgency it requires. The time for dithering and jurisdictional squabbles is over. It's time to act. Canadian old growth forests are under threat. Their destruction and mismanagement will accelerate climate change and biodiversity loss. But a clear path to preserving these endangered ecosystems is open to us. If we are committing ourselves to the principles of UNDRIP, recognizing the rights and title of Indigenous peoples and their stewardship of these lands. Unfortunately, there are far too many hurdles and roadblocks, and time is running out. While I commend the federal government's commitment to plant 2 billion trees, there is concern that the tree planting program will be nothing more than a taxpayer-funded subsidy for the forest industry. Seedlings are planted mostly in clear cuts, replacing trees that had far greater capacity to capture and store carbon. These monoculture tree farms lack biodiversity. I also commend the government's commitment to protect 30% of Canada's terrestrial areas by 2030, with a focus on protecting intact ecosystems in areas of high biodiversity value. This is why I am urging the government to work with First Nations and with the provinces to protect Canada's old growth ecosystems before it's too late. The terrible reality is that from a government perspective, it is relatively simple to clear cut an old growth forest. Protecting and preserving these endangered ecosystems is more difficult. Since colonization, the economy has been based on the extraction and removal of resources. We talk a good game about preservation, but the hurdles and roadblocks that must be overcome to save endangered ecosystems lay bare the underlying values and priorities of governments. On Vancouver Island, only 9% of the original valley bottom big tree old growth forests are still standing, and just 2.6% of those are protected in parks. Contrary to its repeated the stated commitment to protect old growth forest ecosystems, the provincial, go provincial government continues to allow old growth logging. The BC government is also looking at doubling the annual allowable cut in northern BC so whole trees can be ground up and exported as biofuel pellets. This flies in the face of climate accountability and should be opposed. There are plenty of second growth forests available for a healthy forest economy. The focus should be on value-added manufacturing, so forest resources are used to maximize jobs and economic benefit, rather than the raw log exports. The Canadian boreal forest is also a globally significant carbon bank and stores more carbon than is currently in the world's atmosphere. The soils, wetlands and trees of the boreal soak up twice as much carbon as a tropical forest. Without protection, the boreal forest could become a major carbon emitter. If we are truly committed to the principles of UNDRIP and to recognizing the rights and title of Indigenous peoples, governments must provide critical financing for First Nations land protection initiatives and support sustainable economic alternatives to old growth logging for the First Nations communities in these unceded territories. It is the responsibility of the provincial and federal governments to remove the hurdles and roadblocks to First Nations land protection initiatives. It cannot continue to be easier to cut a forest down than to protect it. Thank you. The Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Economic Development and for Western Economic Diversification. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I share the Honourable Member's concern for old growth forests as they provide rare and important habitat for wildlife, especially migratory birds and species at risk like southern mountain caribou, spotted owl and many others. Uh, while the provinces and territories have jurisdictions over the vast majority of our forests, the conservation of biodiversity is a shared responsibility. Uh, ECCC, Environment uh, and Climate Change Canada, 
uh, takes this uh, responsibility very seriously. With our provincial and territorial partners, we have identified the forest sector as a priority to improve conservation outcomes for species at risk. Through our priority sectors initiative, we have recently launched a process to develop a species at risk conservation action plan with provinces, territories, indigenous communities, the forest industry and environmental groups. When complete, this action plan will identify and prioritize opportunities for the alignment of conservation and forest sector policy and practice with positive outcomes for species at risk conservation and sector sustainability. Uh, further, uh, Canada is cooperating with the provinces and territories to protect 25% of our lands and uh, waters by 2025. Our intent is that this will include more old growth forests um, as protected uh, areas, Mr. Speaker. The process will involve engagement with Indigenous partners, provinces, and other interested partners and organizations. BC and Canada are looking forward to pursuing cooperation on old growth forest related conservation opportunities under the recently announced bilateral nature agreement that is currently being negotiated by federal and provincial partners. Uh, finally, Mr. Speaker, the government is working with provinces and stakeholders to develop robust land use and biodiversity criteria as part of the clean fuel standard to ensure that there are no adverse land use impacts or loss of bi biodiversity from growing and harvesting biofuel feedstock. Only biofuels made from feedstock that uh, meets these criteria will be eligible for credit under the clean fuel standard. Under the proposed regulations, forest feedstocks must be harvested according to a management plan that prevents negative of impacts to old growth forest stands or forests. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Parliamentary Secretary for his comments and his assurances. If Vancouver Island old growth were a banquet table, there would only be crumbs remaining. The First Nations have only recently been invited to share in some of the small economic benefits from logging the last of these ancient ecosystems. We cannot expect First Nations that are struggling with the legacy of colonization to engage in the lengthy administrative processes necessary to protect endangered ecosystems without serious government support. Canada is a climate laggard. We have the worst record of the G7 countries for emissions increases. People are fed up with government inaction. On Vancouver Island, land defenders are taking direct action and gearing up for another war in the woods, much like the campaign to save Clockwood Sound that became an international movement in 1993. This government can avoid an international black eye by stepping up to protect endangered old growth ecosystems now. And I hope that they will do so. Well, Parliament Secretary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, thank you to the honorable member for his, uh, his advocacy and passion. Uh, for us, uh, I want to assure him, will also be an important uh, part of Canada's plan to tackle climate change. Temperate old growth forests, for example, function as important carbon reservoirs. Nature based uh, climate solutions such as tree planting and ecosystem restoration, which will be undertaken as part of the recently announced Natural Climate Solutions Fund, will allow carbon to be absorbed or will prevent carbon from being released into the atmosphere. This will have a positive uh, impact on ecosystems, including in old growth forests, and will help Canada to reach its climate goals. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.